Every year, about 400,000 Americans are diagnosed with cataracts. They are the leading cause of blindness worldwide and the most common cause of vision loss in the United States. Today, the only cure is surgery. But thanks to a NASA scientist, other treatments may be on the way. Dr. Rafat Ansari began designing a new method to diagnose cataracts 14 years ago when his own family was affected by the disease. My father developed cataracts, very, really personal story. And I did not know what a cataract is. Okay. So I tried to go to some doctor's offices and found out what a cataract is, and they told me that this is the cloudiness of the lens. I asked them if there is a treatment for it, and they said, no, there is no treatment for it. And when I will grow old, I will get it myself. And the only treatment is a surgery. Ansari didn't like what he was hearing. So he decided to find out more about the disease that caused his father and millions of other Americans to have surgery every year. So I spent, just out of curiosity, one weekend at a library at Case Western Reserve University in town at the medical library and went through some literature to find out what exactly it is. And I learned that there are three different proteins in the lens of the eye. And those proteins are called alpha, beta, and gamma crystallins. In a normal lens of the human eye, the protein crystallins are the size of few nanometers. And as we age, or there are any other uh, problems in the human body, then these proteins would, or, or if there is a, uh, we are subjected to say radiation exposure, okay, as the astronauts do, then these proteins agglomerate and they form bigger sizes. If the size becomes so big that it starts to obstruct the light which is falling on the retina with which we can see, at that point in time, a cataract is being formed. It just so happened that Ansari was studying the behavior of proteins in experiments on the International Space Station. As a scientist at NASA's Glenn Research Center, he used a laser technique called dynamic light scattering technology to examine tiny protein molecules suspended in liquid. Dynamic light scattering means looking at the motion of something, whether it is being suspended in air or suspended in a fluid. So if you are talking about a liquid, the way the scientists would like to use this is that they would pass a light beam through a fluid. If this fluid contains a plain simple water, the water molecules are so small compared to the wavelength of light that they would not scatter any light. But if the particle size starts to grow and it com becomes comparable to the, wave the size of the wavelength of the light, then it would scatter light. And if you collect that light, it will give you lots of information. Could the same technology be used to detect proteins in the human eye? Ansari was determined to find out, so determined that he asked his teenage daughter for help. And the two of them began an unusual experiment. We went to a local abattoir, okay, or a, a place you know, where you can get the eyes, and we got the cow eyes. Took the cow eyes to my house. Okay, we were not set up at that time here at NASA to do those kind of experiments, but just out of curiosity, got the eyes, took it to home. And I have never done any dissections in my life. So I asked my daughter, and she was at that time in ninth grade. Okay. So I asked my daughter, I said, could you please dissect this for me? I want to look at what lens looks like in the eye. So she dissected the cow eye in the kitchen of our house. Uh, my wife obviously was complaining that what we are doing, but she did it anyway. And then my wife asked, well, it's dinner time, let's go have dinner. So I took the lens, put it in a glass jar filled with water, and put it in the fridge, okay, just to say that it doesn't go bad. Came up after a couple hours, opened the fridge, took this thing out, and now what I see is that the clear lens or lenses 
become very opaque. And when they become opaque, that means it's a cataract. But this was a great model for me to study. So very quickly I took that, put it in a beaker, put a thermometer in it, and it started to reduce the temperature. And we used the device that we made for space experiments, the dynamic light scattering device, and it started to take the measurements from the, the lens and got great data. Ansari incorporated the technology into a portable probe that peers into the eye without touching it. The probe recently underwent clinical testing at the National Institutes of Health. Today, I'm very pleased to report that we just finished a pretty good size clinical study on the validation of this device, which perhaps would lead now to find a medical cure for cataract. And the reason I'm saying this is because everyone at NIH and here at NASA, we are very excited about this because this device is about three orders of magnitude more sensitive than anything else out there right now which is being used for detecting cataract at a very early stage. The probe is so effective that it can detect cataracts long before patients experience symptoms. This is allowing doctors to experiment with new drugs that might stop the disease dead in its tracks. But that's not all. The technology may lead to treatments for other diseases. You have heard the one of the adage there which says that I is a window to the soul. We are trying to change that. I is not only a window to the soul, but I is also a window to the human body. Because every tissue type and every fluid type in the human eye represent every tissue type, every fluid type in the human body. And the potential applications are amazing and very huge. So this and some related technologies that we developed here at NASA are now helping us to study not just the lens of the eye for the cataract, but also to look at the disease of the brain, which is say Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. And we could study that through the lens of the eye as well, because the beta amyloid proteins, which are the culprits for Alzheimer's disease, are somehow, I do not know the biochemistry of it, but somehow are expressed in the eye tissues as well. Ansari continues to study non-invasive methods for diagnosing diseases. Someday, he hopes these methods will protect astronauts on future missions to Mars. The ultraviolet radiation on a regular day on Mars is about 800 times higher than a summer day here on Earth, which means that if you are not protecting the astronauts on Mars, they are at very high risk for, say, skin cancer and for other things. As long as the eye health is concerned, we know that ultraviolet radiation is very bad for the eye as well. So for the space applications, what we would like to really know is that before these astronauts develop any symptoms and with the development of new nanotechnology, with the development of new pharmaceutical products coming in that NASA is working with some other people, could that be utilized, okay, that they are kind of sitting in the human body as you can call them kind of robots, miniature robots, micro robots of atomic dimensions. And as soon as we detect that something is happening, they would go and treat that particular problem. With NASA preparing to send astronauts to the moon and eventually to Mars, Ansari's probe could someday make human exploration of space a safer endeavor. Meanwhile, it is giving new hope to millions here on Earth.